Okay, hi everyone. Quick video. Uh, somebody just asked me. Um, I was I was putting up a quick video to say, oh my god, the serial number on my Nikon fifty uh, mil f one point four is six million one hundred thousand something something something. I was like, does that mean there's been six million Nikon fifty mil f one point four D lenses, or is that six million lenses in total? I was like. That's a lot of one lens. I was like, wow, that's that's pretty good. And I was looking at my flashes as well. And like the Nikon SB900, which I got near the time when it came out, whereas the, the serial number is always very hard to see. This one is 2 million something something. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, and then I went on uh, about something. And um, the reason why I was taking serial numbers was for insurance purposes. Now, the insurance company I'm, I'm, I've got my insurance with actually only need the insurance numbers or the serial numbers for the equipment which I've got, which is over a thousand pounds. So my Nikon D seven hundred, my seventy to two hundred millimeter f two point eight lens, maybe my Tamron uh, twenty four to seventy VC lens as well. Um, and uh, but I'm just taking down all the all the serial numbers for all the stuff that I've got, so that if uh, let's say there were a burglary. Um, or somebody stole my stuff, uh, I could give the police all the serial numbers so that if they find somebody with this kit, they can just match up the serial numbers and uh, and arrest that person and give me back my stuff. Um, and people were asking, well, who do I get my insurance with? Um, over the last mm, three, four, five years or so, I've been getting it with a company called Aduki, A-A-D-U-K-I. Um, and uh, I uh, recently... I had it on. I had all my gear uh, with them as a just normal gear insurance, but uh, I've now gone with them for professional indemnity insurance as well, and um, which strangely became cheaper. Um, it was roughly. I, I think I'm insuring about uh, seven thousand pounds worth of gear, and. Uh, before it was around about one hundred and seventy pounds, and now it's the same amount of stuff. But this time with a professional, I'm saying I'm a professional uh, photographer and this is what I need the insurance for, it's gone down to £140, £150, somewhere around about there. I was like, cool, liking that. I'm guessing they're just thinking that because I'm more of a professional, there's less chance of me just accidentally dropping stuff and all that stuff. Anyway, the... What I would say that's good that uh, I've had from them is all their stuff, which they say they cover uh, regarding uh, professional indemnity. Like here, professional indemnity insurance, as soon, and they give you details here. So if any of you are ever kind of worried, like, what, when do I need a contract and all that stuff? And here it gives you stuff about photography. So as soon as you agree to do a shoot, you are con contractually, contractually obliged to produce shots uh, to an accept acceptable standard. Uh, it is a fact of modern life that blah 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 and it gives you all the details there and also it says uh, when you hold professional indemnity insurance with us uh, you can have peace of mind knowing that you're covered for camera malfunction handy one breach of copyright that's a good one loss or damage to your work caused by either you or a pro processing lab I won't be using them very often uh, operator error so that means if somebody if I'm working as a photographer and I've got a Photographer number two, operator error, he maybe drops it, I'm covered for that. Plagiarism, liking that one, and libel and slander. Oh, no, we always remember the libel and slander one. I remember uh, the person there. Uh, so that was good. So um, there's obviously like a, a little bit you need to pay if you do need to make a claim and all that stuff before you, you get your money and all that kind of stuff. But um, if you have a claim which is agreed to be paid, you are required to attend court as a witness and all that stuff, subject to a maximum of £400 per claim, up to £200 per day, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, there, it's, it's good that if you're ever kind of like going, okay, I need insurance, what does it cover? They tell you exactly. So that's possibly the difference from if you're just getting your gear insured under your house insurance, uh, your house insurance is like, if you lose stuff in water damage, you can cover this. This gives you more about the stuff regarding uh, as a professional photographer insurance. And it gives you a lot, lot of a uh, lot of bump here to read out. Uh, but yeah, the main thing is is that it's a, uh, it's, for me, it's roughly around about 150 pounds for about seven grand worth of kit, including professional liability. The company which we've got our house insurance with, um, or it wasn't there, it was another company we went along I, or just called up and said, hi, this is how much I want to be insured for, how much will you do it? And uh, 
uh, it was under business insurance. So maybe there was a difference there, but it ended up for the same amount of stuff being seven hundred pounds. I was like, "Are you sure about that?" They're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That that's how much it'd be." I'm like, "Okay, that's a ten percent of all my kit that I've got." Um, okay, fine, interesting. So I was a bit dubious, dubious about that. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I use. Uh, if you're interested, I, I I haven't ever had to make a claim. Um, so I don't know how easy it is to do a claim, but what regarding UK people, every time I've called them, I've always had a very easy to deal with, very articulate person on the other side of the phone. Um, it's something which I, I don't know if many companies are doing it now, but there's, there's a lot of people complaining about whenever they're calling certain companies, just getting call centers over in India and stuff like that. And, uh, you'd be talking to somebody who has no idea your accent or something like that. So you'd have to be saying, okay, my phone number is 07813, blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, oh, it's seven, eight, what? And you'd be like, no, you've, you've said it wrong. It's not that one. Or, you know, there's something not so good about certain call centers that you've used. Um, but with certainly the ones which I've been using with these guys, it's been absolutely fine all the way from the very start. And uh, always very clearly pronouncing their name at the start, which is always good. So I'm like, all right, ah, cheers, Dave. Thanks very much. Call you later. Bye. And I'm like, that sounded like a nice guy. So if you rate a company on how good its customer service is, customer service is, services is, is are, uh, then I would say so far via their call centers, I've uh, very much enjoyed that. But if any of you have had any experience with them, good or bad, or you've had another company where you've actually had an insurance claim, let's uh, tell everyone down below and let us know about it. Cheers. Bye-bye.